Well, hello everyone. What I want to do is show you what I do before I take this boat down to the pond. Now, you may ask why I'm doing that, but I realise that in all the videos that I've done, I've left out some of the most important parts, which is why I've designed the boat as I have. Um, it's as important that you think about what happens to your boat during downtime as it is um, when you've actually got it sailing. So what you'll notice about this boat is that everything's open to the air. Air is circulating through all of the parts while it's down. And that's a very important component of the boat. The other thing that I do is that I have a list up on the wall of all the things that I need to do prior to taking it down to the pond. The, real, the, the reason I do that, I mean, you'd think, well, for God's sake, at least, you know, he should understand his own boat. But the simple fact is, by following instructions, I know that nothing's left out. Otherwise, I tend to worry. It's a bit like a pilot getting the plane ready before takeoff. You go through a set number of things and then you can relax when it comes to the actual point of, of, say, of, of uh, flying. Or in this case, sailing and submerging. So here we have the control room. Open to the air, obviously. It's got a battery still sitting in there, which I'll leave. That's the 9-volt battery for the Arduino. This is the end cap, for, which has the pump on it. That sits there, and the air gets to that. The hatch is off, as you can see. And here is the, are the motors, the self-leveling device, the um, servos, and the peristaltic pump that works the trim tanks. All have just been exposed to the air, and they're just sitting there happily. The other thing that you might notice is that there's a lot of wires, and that's because wires come out of the front of the control room and link back through um, the end cap that I leave in place. It's bolted into place, and I can remove it. What you'll notice here is that there are a number of tubes coming out of it. Uh, these two tubes uh, work the um, uh, trim tanks, and this tube connects the air volume in the motor room with the volume in the bow room. So as the piston moves up and down, there's a lot of air capacity in there to accept the differences in pressure. Very important. That's one of the reasons why the um, pressure gauge is in its own little container, because the differences in pressure would completely throw that out. Okay, so let's get the boat ready to sail. The first thing on my instruction list is the 11.2 volt LiPo battery, which I take out because you only charge LiPo batteries external to a boat. And this has to go in um, and out, naturally enough, for charging. So that's, I just drop that in there and then I, this is the control room um, cylinder. I just push that into there like so and slide the control room cylinder into place. There's wires that are running up alongside it and, and what have you, but I'm not fussed about that. That's now, now nicely in place. The battery's sitting at the bottom of that and a quick push like that and that's now on. And you can see that the, um, the uh, O-ring is nicely compressed, just about the right amount. And we're left with some uh, wires sitting out here. But uh, what we're going to do now is add this little uh, contraption which is going to bolt into the uh, base of the boat. And this goes in here like this and you'll notice that there are some holes drilled into this. This was not pre-planned, this was something that I worked out as I went along and those holes are pretty brilliant and I'll explain what they do as we travel along on our journey. So this basically holds this um, cylinder in place. It doesn't really need to do, but it does. But primarily, it provides a screw down point for the, um, for the top half of the boat. That's now nicely in place. Good. So the next step is the more complicated part of the whole thing, where I'm now going to put onto this, add onto this, 
the piston and the ballast tank. Now you'll notice that this, and it's pretty gross because I've been fixing up some leaks in this and there's been a crack in it as well, but this sits on its own in between sailing and it's basically, uh, it, it's just the way to get air into everything. Air flows through the ballast section, through the piston section and so on. <clears throat> so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add the battery pack which is the 4.8 volt battery pack and this, as rough as it looks, slips into here, into this nice little bit of space. This wire fits under the piston tank motor and uh, that powers all the radio equipment. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is just connect these up, bring them close to one another, connect this up to the control room and connect this um, wire with the uh, three wires in here to the wires that are going to um, power the piston. Once I've connected those up, this is now the trickiest part of the whole build because I'm going to uh, connect, push this together, which means that this um, extension has to nicely slip into this area that I've created for it. So I do this with some care and just make sure the wires are out of the way. And as soon as it's in place now, and bearing up against the um, seal, I can actually push it on. Now the way I do this is I use a clamp, $20 clamp does a great job with this. I don't need this with the new boat, but with this particular boat this really helps. And now we just push it on, and now that's in place. Part of this also involves making sure all of this is now nicely lined up. Now we come to the um, pump that fits in the, the back of this. And the first thing that I'm going to do is bolt on this hatch. This takes a moment or two. Now we place the pump on, which means that this, uh, this lines up perfectly with the top of the ballast tank. And once again, I'm just going to push that on with my clamp. That's it. Easiest and safest way of doing it. So that's now all in place. That's really good. Um, now the next step is, I do have this little wire holder here, and I will thread the wires through there because it just does help keep them out of the way a little bit. And I'm now going to drop this in. Now you'll see these nuts here and these bolts actually fit directly into these holes on that spacer. So I'm just going to drop it into place, and they connect into place. And that now sits there very nicely. Now these wires I can tuck into place as time goes on. But all of this is looking very nice. Um, just checking the just checking the clearances here. That's better. That's better. That's all much better. Okay, all good. And now we're just going to finish this little job off. Um, the next part is to put on the power switch. Now this is my um, magnetic switch that you'll see where I use these all the time. I put that on there and now connect up the waterproof connector which connects the power now to the system. The second thing that I'm going to do on here is add this little contraption that you don't really see all that much as in the build of the boat, but this actually fits um, right onto here and holds all of this tightly in place. That's it. 
The purpose behind that is to make sure that if any pressure tries to expand these end caps, it simply isn't going to work. That is now locked into place. And this, is, this whole thing is now firmly in place, as you can see. So that is a very nice little item. The next thing that I do is that this is the hose which fits into the um, stern room and I now just fit that on to this little um, tube there. Now that these, these systems are now all connected together, this is the pickup for the pressure gauge and I just drop that down here so that it's nicely uh, vertical and sitting there tucked away and at this point the boats practically now ready the next step is to add the breather tube which goes up the conning tower the next thing that I do is I test it all which means I haven't tucked anything away yet we're just in this nice controlled space Let's just see how it all runs. Perfect, everything's running nicely. I'll open the hydroplanes over here so that they stay open. They're working nicely. I want the piston in about that position. And the trim tanks are fine. So I'm happy with this, but what I'm going to do before I take it down to the pond is close the trim tanks up, <laughs> close the hydroplanes up. Once that's turned off, I turn the whole boat off, turn the power off, and now we're ready just to finish it off, which just means tucking these wires in along the hull, tucking these wires in out of the way. I'll take this uh, radio wire, and the best way of fixing that is to use a little bit of tape and just put it on there like that. So now the final step for me is just to put the top into place, which means threading the breather tube into the conning tower slot. That's all in place, just going to make sure the wires are tucked out of the way. Just going to drop this down. This little thread needs a bit of. That's it. That's all in place. That's good. I've got the screw that goes into the deck, and the boat is ready to sail. Now, the reason I've shown you that is so that you can see very clearly how between sessions this boat has an opportunity for every component to breathe. And, and touch the air. And that's partly the, the reason why I've designed the end caps as I have. So there you go.